Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the show where obvious answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Jake. This is my mum, Claire, and we're from Birmingham. Couple number two. Hello, uh, my name's Tom. I'm from South London. This is my very good friend, David, who's from Sunningdale. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Michelle, and this is my friend, Ellie, and we're from Birmingham. And finally, couple number four. Hi, my name's Max. This is my daughter, Emily, and we're from Wolverhampton. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Here to dot the I's and make the T's. Milk and two sugars for me. Thank you. It's my Pointless friend, it's Richard. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hello there. How are you? I'm very well indeed. Hello, everybody. Um, now, some returners, David and Tom, welcome back. We didn't Thank see you. too much of you last time, knocked out in round one. It's not going to happen again. Emily and Max, uh, back for your final show, got through to the head-to-head -head last time. Very, very impressive, where they lost to Sarah and TJ, who went on to play uh, a round on Pink Things, which was like um, yeah. the pink line on the, uh, on the underground, Pink Floyd albums, things like that. Uh, they got an incorrect answer. Mm -hmm. on uh, the underground. Then they had two Pink Floyd albums. The first one they scored 22 points for, and the second one they scored... The second one... One point! Uh. So, yeah, Sarah and TJ did not win the jackpot, which means we have another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £3,500. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. All you have to remember is this. It's the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so if your scores are low, everything will be great. Very, very best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... Food and drink. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and the question concerns... Sliced fruit and veg. Mmm. Yeah, we're going to put up two boards of uh, nine sliced sections of fruit and veg. You'll see the first and last letters of each as well. There'll be nine on the way up, nine on the way back. What are these fruit and or veg, please? OK, this is exciting. So let's look at our first board of sliced fruit and veg, and here they come. We've got FG, GEAE, -E, RDPR, CE, WN, JT, PA, BTSH, and A-E. There we go. Claire, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on Pointless. Tell us all about yourself. Um, my name is Claire. I work for a telecommunications company where I've been for 35 years. Very good indeed. And what delights you, Claire, when the telecommunications is done? Well, I am an assistant cub leader, so I do that once a week. W is that an evening thing? Yeah. It is. It's an hour and a half once a week. Very and nice. And we go on camps two or three times a year and we do trips out, all sorts. Lovely, lovely. OK, Claire, fruit and veg. Um, I'll go for aubergine, please. Aubergine, says Claire. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted an aubergine on that board. Aubergine is right. That takes you down to 63. Not bad. Nice start to the show. Very well played. Uh, David, welcome back. Um, and tell you. us more about yourself, David. I um, work for an airline, so I travel around the world a lot. Um, in my spare time, I walk my dogs a lot. I've got three dogs. I've um, got two new knees now, so uh, I can walk a lot faster and a lot longer. So that's Three nice. dogs, two knees, and I think that's exciting. How long ago did, you, did the knees arrive? Four and a half years ago now. Oh, that's good. But and not at the same time. A real noticeable. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Look, at that. look at him. Look how spry. How spry he is. Um, David, what are you going to go for on our board of sliced fruit and veg? I'm going to go for the bottom left-hand one, which is papaya. Papaya, says David. Let's see how many of our 100 people agree with David and saw a papaya there. Papaya is right. 63 is the only score we have at the moment, and you whiz past that. Dan, you go to 51. Um, yeah, also called a pawpaw, a papaya. Yes. Yeah, and you yeah. can use the seeds, very good in a smoothie, mm. very mm. multi-purpose. The seeds? Well, you can eat the seeds, can you? Yeah. Of course you can. Why not? Oh, I should say Why so. Why not? Oh, they're the best bit of it. Ah. Oh. I mean, they're not, but you know what I mean. I shall take your point. What's the worst thing a passenger can do, David? What's the kind of, oh, no. I should get sacked if I tell you that. <laughs> well, no, I don't mean what's the worst one anyone has done, but what's what kind of makes your heart sink? I think when you probably wheel a... a 
bar trolley through and then someone says, what have you got? Because when you go to a bar, you normally know what you want. So it's that's oh, a that's very good true. point. When you've got 200 know. people yeah. saying what have that, we got? Uh... We've got drinks. Yeah. You know, yeah. drinks. Just the usual booze. The Richter yeah. smile comes in, yes. I always do. If ever I'm on a train or anywhere and they, someone's going through uh, what's there, I always make sure I listen. So I don't have to ask ask oh, as well. That's clever. Good man. You know, yeah. That said, Good. what do you have? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Ellie, welcome to Point. It's good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself, Ellie. Yeah, so I'm Ellie, and I'm a medical student at Birmingham University. What year are you in, Ellie? I'm in my second year. Second of about six years, is it? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Something like. I mean, listen, you'll you'll know when it comes to the end, I'm sure. Um, but you're enjoying it. It's good. Yeah, it's good fun. I'm okay. looking forward to getting into hospitals and placement. It's a bit theory. What year does that happen? Third year. Third year. Oh, hey. So yeah. not long to wait. Close. Oh, that will be fun. Very good. OK, Ellie, um, what are you going to go for? Um, I'm going to go with fig as the fig. top left. Fig. Yeah, fig. There we are. Someone's seen a fig up there. Let's see if anyone else did. Yep, there we go. 63, exactly the same, in fact, as aubergine. I mean, we need to talk about 37 out of every 100 people in this country. I think we do. I do like a fig, though. But you they know, put I, them with all sorts I, of savoury things, don't they? Sort yeah, of wrapped them in with ham and things. Ham and uh, what have you. I kind of love... I mean, I, figs I really like. I like fig rolls, but I, I don't mean, know if like they've ever seen roll. an actual fig. No. <laughs> no. I used to have fig rolls when I was a kid. Oh, fig rolls. It's like the best. Oh, the best. They must the be fig related. thing to a sweet that a biscuit can do. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Max, welcome back. Thank you. This is your third and final shot at the pointless jackpot round. Um, lovely to see you with us again. Um, tell us more about yourself, Max. Um, a few years ago, for our 25th wedding anniversary, my husband and I learned to sail, so we could actually sail around the Greek islands for our 25th wedding anniversary. Oh, that's lovely. Did you learn out there on the Aegean? No, we, we, we learnt on a very rough and windy April uh, in the Solent. Yeah, with that, you're going to learn quickly there, because you're going to have to. Absolutely. Otherwise, you stay out on the rough, windy Solent. Uh, Max, this board is all yours. Any unclaimed fruit, you can feel free to fill in the blanks. OK, so I think the top one is globe artichoke, red pepper, courgette, watermelon, jackfruit and butternut squash. Uh, but I'll go for globe artichoke. OK, you're going to go for globe artichoke. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Oh, that's a great answer, Max. Down it goes to eight. Very, very well done indeed. Eight for Globe Artichoke. Well played, Max. Very nicely done. Yeah, there's all sorts of artichokes. So the Jerusalem Artichoke and the Globe Artichoke and the Chinese Artichoke. What's the Chinese Artichoke? It's like a kind of mint. Wow. Yeah. I didn't I'll... know that. Yeah. Love a Globe Artichoke. Um, so let's take a look at the scores. Red pepper. 71. Uh, courgette. 34. Watermelon. This has got to be a big score, right? 79. Jackfruit, I thought, would be very low. It actually scores uh, more than Globe Artichoke, which scored 28, oh, wow. so Globe Artichoke was a good one to go for. Uh, and uh, Butternut Squash, 52. So Globe Artichoke, far and away the best answer you could have given, Max. Very well done. I really have I've been an idiot, and I, I want a fig roll so much now, and I'm going to be thinking so about it for I. the rest of the I show. Know. Yeah. I'm sorry if anyone at oh. home feels the same and is now hankering for a fig roll. It's so probably quite hard to get at about you know, well, 25 yeah. past five. I should think so, yeah. You know? I love the way they're slightly squashed. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I love they're it. Not, if they were round, it wouldn't be the same, but they're slightly... Bite the sides off. Mm. That's there the way go. to start with the fig roll. The start ah, with the fig roll. I need to think about something else. Oh, Hopefully there'll be a more interesting fruit on the next board that I can uh, I, I doubt about. it. I doubt it. I doubt well. it, Richard, very much. Yeah, I doubt it. OK, well, we're halfway through our first round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. I can tell you eight was the best score of the pass. So very well done indeed, Max. Uh, then we travel up from there quite a long way to 51, where we find David and Tom, and then up to 63, where we've got a bit of a platform with Ellie, Michelle, Claire and Jake all standing upon it. I would suggest, Michelle and Jake, it is probably between the pair of you to see who stays and who leaves at the end of the round, but good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> Let's put nine more pictures of sliced fruit and veg up on the board, and here they come. We've got... B-T-K-I-P-E-D-N-F-T-P-N-F-T-K-I-F-T-L-K-O-A and C-C. There we are, a lot of FTs there. 
Um, Emily, welcome back. Tell us more about yourself, Emily. Um, well, I am a massive Lord of the Rings fan. Huge oh, you, do you mean Rings. the book or the films? Both. 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 I travelled Australia, but we all, um, I also went and travelled New Zealand, where I actually got to go to Hobbiton. Which oh, there's is, a place called Hobbiton? Yeah, which is basically the Disneyland for people who like Lord of the Rings. Very good indeed. OK, now you're on eight. 54 or less gets you through, thanks to Max's brilliant score. Lovely. Um, I think I um, am going to go for dragon fruit. Dragon fruit. Let's see how many of our 100 people said dragon fruit. Here's your red line. Dragon fruit is right. And you are through. Look at that. Beautiful economy as well. 46, taking your total up to 54. Yes, the fruit of a cactus. Uh, a dragon fruit. It loses some of its flavour in shipping dragon fruits, obviously. They don't grow it over here. Mm. But a bit of lime juice brings out the flavour. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Michelle, welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm originally from Canada, but I study law at the University of Birmingham. And you and Ellie met at the University yes, of Birmingham. We met as flatmates first year. Very yeah. nice indeed. That's good. And what sort of things do you like getting up to in Birmingham when, uh, when you're not working? Uh, I really like cooking and baking. I'm I hoping mean, this doesn't jinx it, but... <laughs> what about this? Yeah. Um, how do you like our board of things? Uh, it's good. I'm trying to figure out what would be the most obscure option, but... Um, I think I'm going to go with okra. OK, o o okra or okra. Um, yeah. No red line for you as your joint high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said okra. Okra, absolutely right. Down it goes 41. Not bad at all. It's a total up to 104. Yeah, very well played. Michelle, coming over from North America, how long did it take before you realised you had to call um, Birmingham Birmingham instead of Birmingham? Um, about the first day I got into it... Uh, I told her off. Yeah, I got told off. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because yeah. it sounds crazy, I know, but if yeah. you're living there, you really, you probably you do have to just kind of... Just go with it. Yeah. yeah. At least you didn't go to Loughborough. Imagine yeah. that would have been oh, much worse. Yes. Whoa. I will oh, never yeah. say Birmingham again. <laughs> no. Thank you very much indeed. Um, now then, Tom, Hi. welcome back. Tell Thank us more you. about yourself, Tom. Um, yeah, as well as flying with David, you know, I've been flying for a long, long time as well, so I love travel, but, um, yeah, I love the theatre, love reading and football. The season ticket holder at Fulham. <gasps> I know. Wow. The best place to watch football, yeah, isn't it? certainly is. It's the best place to watch football. Very nice. In fact, okay. Richard used to sit about, probably about 12, 15 rows in front of us. So we'd always check before a game, yeah. so is Richard here today? Yeah, he's here. He's no, still, he still couldn't see over me. I was used to say, <laughs> I'm so glad we don't sit behind him, is what we say all the time. Um, Tom, you're on 51. We are looking for a score of 52 or less from you. What are you going to go for? Um, I think I'm going to go for pomegranate. OK, pomegranate. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Here is your red line. Pomegranate. Pomegranate is right. 59 is what it scores, takes your total up to 110. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of pomegranate powder and pomegranate syrup as well. It's very sour, mm. it's gorgeous. Mm. Used a lot in Persian cooking. That's making my mouth water mm. now, rather than the... Uh... Fig rolls. Yeah, it hasn't What about a pomegranate but... and fig roll? <gasps> Yeah. yeah. I mean, the funny thing about pomegranates is, I mean, there's a lot of delicious stuff in there, but there's an awful lot of seed in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's seed heavy. Mainly seed, yeah. For lot sure. Of, lot of, lot well, that's of why the powder and the syrup are quite. Um, oh, yeah. Because you get the flavour. Without all the stuff. Yeah, without all the pips. Yeah, nice. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, Jake, here we are. Welcome to Point. It's good to have Thank you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, so, I'm a pub manager, originally from Birmingham, uh, but I'm currently running a pub in Bath or Bath. What, what took you away from Birmingham? Availability. I was, Availability. The, I was the assistant manager at a big pub in Birmingham and uh, an ah. opening came up to, to become the general manager, so I, I travelled down. That's rather a lovely thing to do, though. Yeah. Now, you were on 63, you're looking to score 46 or less with this. Do you want to talk us through that board? Um, so I think the top left one is beetroots, I think the middle one is passion fruit, and then kiwi fruit, leek, and I think the one I'm going to go for is the one in the bottom right, which I think is celeriac. Celeriac, says Jake. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for celeriac. Here's your red line. Can we get you below that? Celeriac is absolutely right. Oh, I think you can do this, Jay. Yes, you can. Very well done indeed. Down he goes to 28. Takes your total up to 91. Very well played. Yeah, there is a, there is a single digit score up here, which we will leave I to the end. I don't know which one that is, yeah. Because um, you're right about beetroot. And that would have scored 71. Passion fruit, you're right about. That would have scored you 49. Kiwi fruit, 
would have scored 76. The leak would have scored 69. And this last one is the best chance for well, the this board. is exciting, because I've always wondered, there's a thing that is kohlrabi. Is that how it fits? It has to be. I've never known what kohlrabi looks like. It looks exactly like whatever that looks like. Wow. It is kohlrabi. Look well done. That would have we scored are. nine points. Very well done if you said kohlrabi. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. That brings us to the end of our first round, and we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> How did this happen, Tom and David? Consistent. This is a departure ahead of schedule, I'd say. <laughs> it really um, is. Anyway, well, listen, it's been lovely having you on. Uh, we'll see you again next time. Please, can we get through to at least the head-to-head -head next time? <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Uh, Tom and David, thank, thank you, you so much, much for playing. Yeah. Uh, but for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. everybody, we made it through the fruit and veg round and Max not just made it through but made it through as our lowest individual scorer. So uh, well done over there on the far podium. In fact, Emily and Max are lowest combined scorers as well. So double well done. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Jobs. Can you all decide in your pairs who wants to go first, who wants to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns people who got a new job in 2020. Richard? Yeah, we're going to show you some descriptions of and the initials of some people who got a new job in 2020. There we are. There we are. Yeah, got it. OK, let's reveal our first board of descriptions and initials, and here they come. We have got the actor, writer and comedian who replaced Sandy Toxfig as co-host of The Great British Bake Off. ML, former director of public prosecutions, elected leader of the Labour Party in April 2020, KS, sports broadcaster and former amateur jockey who began her term as president of the Rugby Football League in July 2020, CB, food writer and author of Tin Can Cook and Cooking on a Bootstrap, who co-hosted the TV show Daily Kitchen Live, JM, TV presenter who joined Blue Peter as the show's 39th presenter, MM, and a star of the IT crowd who hosted the BAFTA Television Awards in July 2020, R.A. There we are. Claire? I'm going to have to go for the top one and say Matt Lucas. Matt Lucas, says Claire, for the Great British Bake Off host. How many of our 100 said Matt Lucas? It's right. Down there goes to 24. Good start to the round. Yeah, also had his first UK Top 40 single in 2020, Matt, with uh, Thank You Baked Potato. I think he sang on Vindaloo as well, but I'm not, not, yes. not credited uh, him. Yeah. This is his first, first solo hit. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Richard, now then, Ellie. Um, so, I think I'm going to go for the fourth one, because I actually own one of those cookbooks, but I think I might have the surname wrong, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, so, I'm going to say Jack Morley. Jack Morley. Well, maybe. Let's hope you haven't got the surname wrong. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jack Morley for the tin can cook. No, I'm sorry. Not Jack Morley. That scores you 100 points. Sorry, Eddie. We admire risk, though, on this show. I'll give Thank the correct you. answer at the end of the pass. Thank you very much, Richard. And now then, Emily, do you feel like talking us through this board? I'll try my best. Good um... I'm terrible with politicians, but I think it's Kia someone, and I can't remember his last name. Uh, sports broadcaster, I think, is Claire Balding. No idea about the food writer. No idea about the Blue Beater presenter, but I do think I know the IT crowd, and that's Richard Ayoade. Richard Ayoade, and that's going to be the answer you're going to give. Yes. Richard Ayoade. Let's see if that's right for the host of the TV BAFTAs. Richard Ayoade, absolutely right. 100 is our high score, 24 is our low. And you pass both of those. Dan, you go to 14. Very well done indeed. Emily. I played Emily. Nicely done. Um, let's look through this board. Not Jack Morley, you're very, very close. Jack Munro was the answer, I'm afraid. Eight points for Jack Munro. Um, it is Kia. Kia Starmer. Starmer. Yeah, would have scored 40. You're quite right, it is Claire Balding. She would have scored roughly the same as Richard Iowardi. She would have scored you 15 points. Uh, and this last answer, best answer on the board, Mawaka Mudenda. Very well done if you said that. Point this answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through our second round. Let's have another look at those scores. 14, Emily. Very well done indeed on that far podium. Lovely low score there. Uh, then we travel up to 24, Claire and Jake, then up to 100, I'm afraid. Ellie and Michelle a little bit ahead there. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? 
OK, let's put six more descriptions and initials of people who got a new job in 2020 on the board, and here they are. We've got host of Big Brother and the Million Pound Drop, who became a panellist on The Masked Singer, DM. MP appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer in February 2020, RS. Football coach who succeeded Mick McCarthy as manager of the Republic of Ireland team, SK. TV presenter who began hosting the relaunched version of Ready Steady Cook, RCN. Former civil servant appointed Prime Minister of France in July 2020, JC. And Olympic medal winning member of the royal family who became a director of the Cheltenham Racecourse, ZT. There we are. Now, Max. Um, MP appointed Chancellor of the Exchequer. Uh, Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, says Max. Here's your red line. Let's see if we can get you below that with Rishi Sunak. Very well done, it's right and you are through. Down it goes to 35, taking your total up to 49. Yeah, well done. Often uh, on television in 2020, when he got that job, uh, it would be Bradley Walsh versus us versus Rishi Sunak. That would be what, yeah. what would yeah. be on at five o'clock every day. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Michelle, I think this is a really tough round for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Being Canadian and all. <laughs> Bit of an advantage. Mind you, there, is, there are a couple of international questions in there. Yeah, to be fair. I don't know anyone on the, any of the answers on the board, so I'm going to try to take a swing at a name, um, trying to figure out which one I can try to guess at. Host of Big Brother, uh, Donna Martin. I don't know. Donna just, just Martin. Throwing a name out there. <laughs> for the host of Big Brother and now panelist of The Masked Singer. Uh, Donna Martin, let's see. No red line views, you're the high scorers. No, I'm afraid on this occasion, uh, an incorrect guess. Okay, that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 200. Had to go for something, and you got the initials right, so that's, uh, that's something. Listen, most of the way there. Now, Jake. Good news is, doesn't matter what you score here, um, why not talk us through the board? So I think the top one is Davina McCall. Um, I think the TV presenter there is Rylan Clark Neal. And I believe the bottom one is Zara Tyndall. Um, I'll go with Rylan Clark Neal for the Ready Steady Cook. Rylan Clark Neal, no red line, you're already through. How many of our 100 people said? Rylan Clark Neal. Rylan Clark Neal is absolutely right. And that goes down to 13. Very well done indeed. That takes your total up to 37. Well played, Jake. Gave us three correct answers and chose the, the right one of the ones you knew as well. Um, Davina McCall is correct. She would have scored you 45 points. Zara Tyndall uh, down the bottom there, also correct. And she would have scored you 24. The football coach who succeeded Mick McCarthy. Very well done. If you said Stephen Kenny, one point for Stephen Kenny. Uh, and the French Prime Minister feels like we should know the French Prime Minister, right? Yeah, we should. Uh, we, we know the French he's President. He's got a he's got a name like a like sounds like a brand name, doesn't it? Jean Castex. There you go. That's it. And it's a pointless answer, so very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings to the end of our second round, and we have to say goodbye to a pair. Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle and Ellie, our latest members of the 200 Club. So congratulations <laughs> on that, by the way. But this is where we say goodbye for this show. We'll see you again next show. Look forward to that very much. Meantime, thanks so much, Michelle and Ellie. But for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Emily and Max, Jake and Claire. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £3,500. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, should we see if we can't boost that jackpot by finding a couple of pointless answers? OK, here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Pacific Islands as they could, Richard. Yep, six islands. We've made two of them up. Two of them are pointless. 250 quid for the pointless ones. Let's reveal our potential Pointless Pacific Islands. Here they come. Espiritu Santo, Wake Island, Adequate Island, Niue, Isla Sorna, Mangareva. There we are. Seven Pacific Islands. Two of those are pointless. Can we find the two pointless answers? Come on. Right. Um, feel free to chat as a, as, a, as a foursome because it's in everyone's interest to, well, to sure find the these. One's the top the one's the wall of the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The top one's the so Sanna Rules Manager. <laughs> um, I don't know about anything okay, else. I adequate Island. I like the sound of Adequate Island. OK, you choose. Go on then. It's probably going to be really wrong. I, 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 I like Adequate Do Island. Do you know, as a, as a devoted reader of Patrick O'Brien, I think it sounds like the kind of name 
that those uh, early adventurers might have given an island. Should we find out? Adequate island? Come on, please. Please. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, not adequate island, but I'm completely with you there. Uh, Jake and Claire. As we said, we think the top one is the, uh, the other incorrect answer. We think that's the surname of the Wolves manager. For absolutely no reason at all, we'll go for Mangareva. Mangareva. OK, Mangareva, let's find out. Is that a pointless Pacific island? It's an island in the Pacific. And it's a pointless one indeed. There we are. Very well done. <laughs> Very well done. Yeah, there's no adequate island. There's a good enough island just off uh, Papua New Guinea, oh. um, which is what we were getting at there. Now, I'll tell you a couple of the ones that did score points. Nui, which uh, occasionally gets mentioned on the show, would have scored you points, as would Wake Island, named after a sailor called Wake, uh, who visited uh, one point for each of those. So of those other two, one of them is a pointless answer, one of them is incorrect. What do you think? Well, Espiritu Santo, I mean, it, it's, the it's from manager. the... It is the Wolves manager, but it's also, <laughs> it's also from, um, from the liturgy. So yes. it's a perfectly legitimate name for an island. It's been Holy Spirit, is all it means, and I'd be inclined to go for it. OK. It does sound, though, like it was a red herring, but it wasn't. It's, the, it's, a, oh. it's a pointless answer, but it's Espiritu Santo and, the, and it's Nuno Espirito Santo, the Wolves boss, but uh, once you've seen that and assumed it's a red herring, of, it, of course it looks like one. You think, well, that's a, that's a cheat. Uh, Isla Sauna is from Jurassic Park, the other yeah, incorrect answer. So, uh, Mangareva and Espiritu Santo. Very well done if you said those. Thank you very much indeed. Well done. You managed to find one pointless answer, which means we can add £250 to the jackpot. Therefore, it now stands at £3,750. But who'll be playing for it? Let's find out in the head to head. As ever, the first pair to win two questions in this round will be playing for that jackpot. You're now allowed to confer before you give your answers. Best of luck to both pairs. Here comes the first question, and it is all about... 20th century animated children's television. Yep, five pictures are uh, from 20th century animated kids' TV. Uh, you'll see the initials of the show as well and the year it was first broadcast. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five images. Here they come. We've got A, B, M. 1980. B. T. C. 1996. D. J. A. T. M. T. 1976. And E. T. M. R. 1965. There we are. Animated children's television from the 20th century. Um, Emily and Max, you're our golden couple, so you will go first. Feel free to confer. Um, a button moon. Button moon. Say Emily and Max for A. Now, Jake and Claire, can you talk us through the rest of that board? Um, B, we think, is the clangers. Uh, e is the magic roundabout. But the one we're going to go for is C, which we think is Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's Laboratory. So we have Button Moon versus Dexter's Laboratory. Emily and Max have gone for Button Moon for A. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Button Moon. Button Moon is right. Button Moon takes us down to 36. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jake and Claire have gone for Dexter's Laboratory for C. Let's see if that is right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's Laboratory is right. It's going to be close. Oh, and it wins. Look at that. Down goes to 31. Dexter's Laboratory wins it. Uh, Jake and Claire, well done. After one question, you're up 1 0. Very nicely done. Oh, great. Now I'm thinking of fig rolls and I've got the theme tune to Button Moon going around my head. <laughs> um, B is the Clangers. You're quite right. A lot of similar scores on this board, so that would have scored you 39. And we've got the lowest scorer and the highest scorer left. The highest scorer uh, is the Magic Roundabout. And that would have scored you 77. And the lowest scorer... Well, listen, I know it's and the magic torch, just from the, from the picture. Oh, the question yeah, is, what is so. the... 
James. Jimmy? Jamie. Jamie. Jamie and the Magic Torch. And that would have scored you 21. It's funny uh, what the me what memory can do to you, because I would have put every penny I've got on that being Jamie and his Magic Torch. Mm. In my head it is, I sing the theme tune as Jamie and his Magic Torch. But Jamie and the Magic Torch. Yeah. He had a Magic Torch. It's called Jamie. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that brings us to the second question. Now, Emily and Max, you've done incredibly well on your third and final show to get yourselves positioned as the golden couple, but you have to win this question to stay in the game. Jake and Claire slightly tilted in their favour. They get to answer it first. Good luck. Our second question is all about... H.G. Wells novels, Richard. Yep, we're going to put the titles of five H.G. Wells novels up on the board. We've missed a word out from each. Can you fill in the gaps, please? Thank you very much indeed. So, can you supply the missing words to these H.G. Wells novels? And we have got... The Blank Machine, The Blank of Things to Come, In the Days of the Blank, The Blank of Dr. Morrow, and The Invisible Blank. There we go. Now, Jake and Claire get to go first. I don't know anything. Between us, we know none of them. You're addressing the death of Dr. Morrow? Which one? The death of Dr. Morrow, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we'll go with the, the death of Dr. Morrow. The death of Dr. Morrow, say Jake and Claire. Now, Emily and Max, do you want to talk us through that board? No. <laughs> uh, I think it's the time machine, mm. the sign of things to come, uh, and the invisible man. So, shall we go with the time machine? The yeah. time machine, say Emily and Max. So, we have the death of Dr Morrow and the time machine. Uh, Jake and Claire went for the death of Dr Morrow. Is it right? Let's find out. No, I'm afraid not the death of Dr Morrow, which means, Emily and Max, you merely have to be correct with the time machine. Let's see if you are. Yep, you are. Very well done indeed. It goes down to 81, but the crucial thing is it's right, which brings you back into the game. Just what we needed after two questions. It's one all. Yeah, very well done. A big score. It's not actually the biggest scorer on the board. There is a bigger scorer up there. Two of our 100, by the way, um, said the washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the biggest scorer on, on the board, unsurprisingly, the, the Invisible, Invisible Man, Man. would have scored to you 86. Uh, not the death of Dr Moreau. The island. The island of Dr Moreau. That would have scored you 23. Uh, not the sign of things to come. Shape. The shape of things to come. I would have scored more points, though. I would have scored you 33. And this is the, uh, the obscure yeah. answer on the board. I'm not sure on this one. In the days of the comet. Ah. Uh, which is probably where you got the washing machine from. Um, <laughs> uh, would have scored you two points. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed. Now, here comes your third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question this afternoon is all about... Eves. All about Eves. Yeah, all about Eves. We're going to show you five clues now to things with Eve in their name. Uh, Eve or Eves. Very best of luck. Thank you very much. OK, let's reveal the five clues and here they come. We have got... Month during which Midsummer's Eve occurs in Northern Hemisphere countries. First name of the Nobel Prize winning mother of the concert pianist and author Eve Curie. English romantic writer of the narrative poem The Eve of St Agnes, published in 1820. Star of the TV series Killing Eve, who plays the assassin Villanelle in the show. And the first man, according to the Bible, who accompanied Eve in the Garden of Eden. There we are, Emily and Max, over to you. Let me know, Adam. Who's the person that does Killing Eve? Can you remember? Who plays the assassin? Can you know anything else? Yeah, the month during which we Eve occurs in the northern atmosphere. Uh, so the top one. Uh, is June. June. Say, Emily and Max. Now, Jake and Claire, can you talk us through that board? I think the second one has got to be Marie Curie. Um, I don't know the middle one. The bottom one has to be Adam. Um, but the one we'll go for is the fourth one, which I believe is Jodie Comer. Jodie Comer, say, Jake and Claire. So, we've got June versus Jodie Comer. June versus Jodie. Uh, Emily and Max have gone for June for Midsummer's Eve. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. June is absolutely right. That takes us down to 51. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jake and Claire have gone for Jodie Comer, the star of Killing Eve. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Jodie Comer. Jodie Comer is absolutely right. And it wins you the point. Very well done indeed. Down it goes to 21, and it means after three questions, Jake and Claire 
you are through to the final 2-1. Very well played. It's a lovely answer. She's one of those people who there's certain people that get their surnames permanently misspelt or, or misread. I'm always an Osmond. Stephen Hawking is always Stephen Hawking's. And four of our hundred said Jodie Cromer, which is which is what all sorts of people call her. But Jodie Cromer, very well done. Um, you are quite right about Mary Curie. That would have won you the point as well. Would have scored you 43. Um, do you know the English romantic uh, writer? It's Keats, I think. Is it Keats? Let's take a look. Very well done. It's a pointless answer as well. Well done okay. if you uh, stayed Keats at home. And what do we reckon this scores, the first man? Um, you'd hope in the 90s, maybe 93. Let's take a little look. It is Adam, of course, uh, as you said, and it's 95 points. Good. 95 mm. points. There we go. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, that means the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. Oh, you were set on such a wonderful trajectory there. Straight into the final, I thought, from the very get-go. You've been brilliant. The whole way through, lovely, lovely low scores the whole way through. Then I'm afraid Jake and Claire have just rip, they've just whipped it out from under your nose. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank, Thank you so much for playing Emily and Max. <laughs> but for Jake and Claire, now time for the point. That's fine. Well, congratulations, Jake and Claire. You've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £3,750. <laughs> well, once again, it's a, it's a new coming pair, coming straight through the, uh, the lower ranks, right up to the final. Um, coming from behind as well in the head-to-head, -head, which is very exciting, so very well done. What would you like to see come up in this, uh, in this last round? Um, maybe 80s music. There's a lot of music that would be good for us. Classic rock, classic metal for me. Some sport as well, Olympics, tennis. Like OK, that, well, you know what it's like, these last rounds. I mean, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's anything could happen. Let's hope there's something up here that you can, you can have a go at. We've got... Me, myself and I in the 1970s, Oliver Cromwell, Mercury Prize-winning rap albums, sporting shutouts. What do we think? I think it's... What do you think about the 1970s one? Before it's my time, too, they, yeah. don't, they don't like that phrase. Sporting. <laughs> <laughs> I think a bit. I think a bit before you. And, and in, in a jackpot round, I think it's acceptable. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's got to be the yeah, sporting. sporting. Sporting shutouts. Sporting shutouts. It is. Yeah, I think so. And uh, let's see if we can serve you up a tennis question here. You never know. We are looking for any of the following, please. Any team who has swept the board uh, in an NBA, NHL or MLB finals, please. We are looking for any FA Cup winning team who kept a clean sheet in the final, 1872 through to 2020. Or we are looking for any player who has won an open era Wimbledon singles final in straight sets. So two sets for the women, three for the men. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. As always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is just for one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? We are. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Thank you. If I go. I think Stoke and Millwall both won finals 1-0. Um, Arsenal beat Villa 5-0 recently, but... Don't mention that. <laughs> uh, it's quite recent as well. Um, what tennis players do we know? That have won in straight, yeah, I'd... straight sets. Did Angelique Kerber? I think she won... Three or four years ago, straight sets. Well, I think I'm quite happy to take your first two in that one, then. Let's just have a think. What are the... FA Cup winners? I don't know enough to know who definitely kept clean sheets. Maybe, I think, I think Sunderland have won it. That might have been 1-0. I don't know, do you want to... Go with the two if that I got you a... said. I've got... Yeah. I don't know about Angelique Kerber. Well, I know she's... Ten That's seconds left. Third. Put her as third. Or do you want to go for the two. three football ones? No, I'll go for the tennis player and the two football and, OK, yeah. OK. OK, there we are. Your minute has just run out. Sounds like you've finalised your three answers. What can you give me? So, we've got two from FA Cup winners. Yeah. Uh, Stoke City. Stoke City. And Millwall. Millwall. And for the tennis players, Angelique Kerber. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? Possibly Stoke. OK, Stoke City will put last. Yep. Uh, least likely to be pointless. Possibly Angelique Kerr, but Angelique I'm not Kerber. sure if it's correct. Millwall goes in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got Angelique Kerber, Millwall, Stoke City. 
Well, three answers on the board there. If one of these turns out to be pointless and wins that jackpot for you, £3,750. That's a jolly nice jackpot to be taking home. What would you like to do with it? Um, so I'm engaged at the moment. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Uh, due to be married in just over two years, so my part would be mostly going towards that, definitely. Very good. Claire? And I like to go on holiday. <laughs> Very nice indeed. So, yeah, holiday. Okay. Well, let's hope one of these answers wins that jackpot for you. Your first answer was Angelique Kerber. In this case, we're looking for any tennis player in the Open era who's won a Wimbledon's singles final in straight sets. If Angelique Kerber is pointless, she will win you £3,750. Angelique Kerber is right. We just have to see how far down the column we get with Angelique Kerber. Down we go through the teens. Is this going to be pointless? Still going down through the single figures. Still going down. You've done it. Look at that. The first answer of the three is Angelique Kerber. And it's a pointless answer. Congratulations. Uh, that means you're taking home today's jackpot of £3,750. Very well done. And um, that's great. I mean, it's, uh, it's fascinating, that thing, isn't it, so, uh, uh, this mother-son relationship, because obviously, Jake, you were doing all the heavy lifting there, you were doing all the work, and you were, you were going to go for the three football teams at the end. Very nearly, but yeah. Mum then steps in and says, oh, yeah, maybe go Angelique Kerber. Millwall and Stoke City, both incorrect answers. Were they? Yeah. OK. <laughs> uh, they both lost finals. And so you were going to go for Sunderland instead of Angelique yeah. Kerber. Would have scored you two points. OK. So mum was so son was right and mum was right. So between you, you uh, you did brilliantly. Very very well played. Um, let's take a look at the pointless answers in the different categories. I know people love US sports and they don't come up that often. So I'll go through all the pointless answers for you. Uh, the Cubs, the uh, the A's, the San Antonio Spurs, the Maple Leafs. You could have the Orioles, the Braves, the Reds, uh, Colorado Avalanche, Detroit Red Wings, the Oilers, the Rockets, the Dodgers, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Montreal Canadiens, New Jersey Devils, uh, the New York Islanders, the 76ers. All of those were pointless answers. Very well done if you said any of those. Uh, now the football teams. Bolton have done it four times. They're up there. Um, Ipswich Town um, won against Arsenal. Southampton beat Man United 1-0. West Ham did it a couple of times, including against Fulham. Um, other pointless answers, Barnsley, Bradford City. Berry did it a couple of times. Charlton Athletic. Clapham Rovers did it in the uh, 19th century. Huddersfield, Old Carthusians, Old Etonians, Oxford University, all 19th century as well. Sheffield United, Wanderers and West Brom. West Brom did it a couple of times as well. Uh, and these tennis players... You could have had Chris Ebert did it a couple of times, Jana Novotna, Michael Stick, Pat Cash, uh, Angelique Kerber, well done, uh, Garby Muguruza, Jan Kodesh, uh, Lindsay Davenport, Leighton Hewitt, Margaret Court, Petra Kvitova did it a couple of times, Richard Krychek and Simona Hallett as well. Well done if you said any of those at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard, and thanks once again to our winning players, Jake and Claire, who take away today's jackpot of £3,750. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>